Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the glory in this house. I feel such a sweet presence in this room. Sweeping through this room right now. I feel healing in this place. Hey. I feel healing all around me. In this place. Yes, yes sir. day. Thank you for your presence that is in this place. God, we understand that you are not wasting this opportunity to reach out with healing today. God, we want you to know, Lord, that we love you and we appreciate your spirit that we feel in this place. You have taken this house of wood and of earth and turned it into a heavenly tabernacle. We thank you for the anointing of your spirit that we feel in this place right now. God, it is the anointing that destroys the yoke that you have sent into this room. We thank you, Lord, for without it, none of us would stand here. We are recipients and byproducts of your grace. And Lord, we're not here, Lord, to brag, but we're here to boast in you. We need you, Lord, every day of our life. And we know that you have met us here today, Lord. We are intersecting an appointment, Lord, that you have set up for a long time. And Lord, not just for those who are here, but those that are listening right now. God, I pray that the anointing of this presence would fill their house or fill their car, even a jail cell, wherever they might be, Lord. You are there with them at this moment. And we ask you, Lord, to touch them. Begin to let chains fall off of their life, Lord, at this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. His 
grace is sufficient for every trial life. answers on time When the outlook seems darkest and faith is the hardest to find Just stand still and see how the Lord to your rescue will reign His grace is sufficient for every trial we face he gives me grace sufficient for every trial I face. In each situation, He's promised to stand in my place. He'll take me through every valley to stand on the mountain by grace. His grace is sufficient for every trial I face. He'll take me through every valley to stand on the mountain by grace. God's grace is sufficient for every trial I face.
his name reigns above all the
Spirit speaking to my heart while the choir was singing that song. And just saying, there are several here tonight. You came into this building. And your heart was filled with much trepidation. Fear seized your soul. You're afraid how you're going to make it to the next day, next week. You don't like the situation that you're in right now, but there's nothing you can really do about it. You're afraid. And during this service here tonight, you have felt warmth, you felt a touch, an assurance. You looked and saw in people's faces hope, faith, love, joy. It seemed to vacate your life. And you want so bad to have that. But that is right next to you right now. That is the presence of Almighty God. That is as close as the mention of his Psalmist name. Psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's hope for me tonight because I need a shepherd. I need strength, I need help, I need a refuge, but I'm glad that it's all in his hand. Praise the Lord. God. 
your hands, all you people, and shout to God with a voice of prayer.
just came to talk with you, Lord. I have no special motive in mind. I just want to thank you for all the other times I just came to talk with you, Lord.
Come on, someone, if you've got the Holy Ghost tonight, go ahead and let it out. About 2,000 years ago, a man came to a small country in the Middle East, a man that did not have parents with a worthy name in society, a man that was unknown and unrecognized by many. But the Bible says that he went about healing the sick, casting out devils. He went about changing lives, setting people free. That man, we know him, we read of him. His name was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And after about three years of ministry, of bringing victory to mankind, mankind that was, that was bound and trapped by sin, Jesus Christ, after about three years of ministry, the Bible records that they hung him to a cross. They crucified him. Not understanding the full impact when they hung him to the cross. They took our sins, our mistakes, our failures, our past, and they hung that on the cross with him. The Bible speaks of the shed blood that washes away our sins. The story continues. They put him in a tomb for three days. And then three days later, they went back and they checked the tomb and it was empty. He was not there any longer. And then you jump over to the book of Hebrews and it says it like this. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. Let me say it again. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, he's not dead. He's not in a grave. He's not trapped in a tomb somewhere. He rose with all power and all life and all healing. And what he did when he was on earth, he wants to do for you tonight. He wants to heal your sick body. He wants to set your life free. He wants to deliver you from the power of Satan and from the power of sin. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, Pentecost is not just noise and fast music and running around. It is deliverance. It is freedom. It is being set free and forever changed. And it has been said among society... That once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. My friend, when you meet Jesus, the Bible says it like this. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have been made new. What am I preaching about? A life-changing experience that man can't quantify, man can't define. But you know, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Once I was trapped. 